my god! Look at this lady! My goodness! I don't know why, but I suddenly want her to pick me up and throw me. Welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Last episode we made it here to Zapapico, a quaint little town in the middle of the desert that apparently holds a very special treasure. As a lot of you guys in the comments have told me, this is where we can finally get one of the most coveted evolutions in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the evolution of Charcadet, which is actually different depending on which game you're playing. So we're gonna talk to this old dude who collects Bronzor, I have an auspicious offer, if you'll trade me 10 bronze or fragments. Okay, I don't know if I do have those bronze or fragments, uh, apparently not, so we gotta go battle them and acquire said bronze or fragments in order to get one of the best evolutions in the game, and one that we're probably gonna be using today because I am a man of my word, and last episode I asked you guys in the comments to vote for whether we should take on the poison type team star base, which is right over here, or the water type gym all the way across the map in Cascarrafa. And even though people did point out that the water type gym is apparently easier, there were in fact more comments telling me to take on the team star base, both because we're closer to it right now in the desert, but also because it'll provide more of a challenge. So that is what we're gonna be doing. And if you guys are excited, make sure to smash that like button. But like I said, before we go take it on, because it is a poison type base, there's a new Pokemon I want to get myself, and also, I noticed that right over here we have the guy who wants us to defeat seven trainers in the desert! Great! I'm literally missing one more, but I believe this dude right over here I haven't actually battled yet. I saved him just in case we did need one more battle, so thank goodness I did, because yeah, we literally need one more, so let's take on Lorenzo! He thinks he's looking real cool in those glasses, I bet, but he's not. Alright, now we should be able to get the reward from this guy. On behalf of the Pokemon League, here is a Punching Glove! Another new health item that boosts the power of the holder's punching moves and prevents direct contact with the targets. Whoa! Okay, little bit of a two-for-one special. Boost punching moves, but also makes you, I guess, ranged, which is really interesting. I guess it'd be kind of like the ability Long Reach, where you wouldn't trigger abilities that only work based off physical contact. However, I think the only punching Pokemon I have is Phoebe, the Palmot that we evolved last episode. What is this cave over here? Yo, we have a Dino? What the frick? And a Salandit too? Okay, hold up. I suppose we should actually try to catch this little dude, just in case we don't end up running into any more, because that feels like it's a pretty rare Pokemon. Oh god, it's at level 36 though. Okay, maybe not. A little tip people have been telling me is you can actually use the ZL button to target Pokemon and it shows you their level even before you challenge them and oh, I was trying to get the backstrike on it. I don't know if that would have even worked since it already like noticed us. If we can still catch it off guard, like technically it would know or see us coming so I don't think it would count. But yeah, I'm gonna try out Spinel because obviously fairy type. Very, very good against uh, Dragon and Dart. I don't think another will kill it, so we'll take it down to red. I feel like Dino is usually pretty tough to catch, so I'm gonna go for an Ultra Ball, and even that isn't gonna do crap. Okay, well, sorry Spinel. I hit it with a Thunder Wave, so maybe now it'll work? Otherwise, I don't think we're gonna be able to get this Dino, but hey, we did it! Maybe it was just Luma that intimidated it. I mean, that bird is pretty intimidating as Picante hits level 30 and that's where I'm gonna like cap off my Pokemon at least for now until after we've beaten the water gym and I guess the team star base. Like, I want my Pokemon not to be higher than level 30, but that is gonna be Dino in the decks. Oh my god, it's like almost at the end. You saw there, Gimme Ghoul was the very last Pokemon that we've got registered. Let's check out the rest of this cave. I see a Dunce Bars. For a second, I thought it was the evolution, but no. We do have a TM at the very end, though, for Dark Pulse and a couple of Sableyes, and whoa! Wait, I feel like I recognize this place. Yeah, it ended up leading all the way back over to, uh, actually, I'm a little bit confused. Oh yeah, no, the field before, like, Lavincia and Artisan. Okay. And that reminds me, there's actually a tower, which you can see all the way down there, that I actually never explored 
There's some ruins right here too, which of course you can find Bronzors in ruins, so I guess we'll head over to this one first. Ah, here we are. Now let's see if we really do have some Bronzors around here. There's definitely Gimme Ghouls, which we might as well grab some coins while we're at it. But I'm not seeing- ah, oh, spoke too soon, there's a Bronzor. So let's get our little Char Cadet up first since he's the one that kind of needs to do this challenge anyway. What the frick? I didn't want to fight a Deerling. I suppose that's where targeting the Pokemon would have came in handy, but of course I forgot when I actually need it. Aha! We have some more Bronzors, and I just remembered that we can actually just use auto battling to do this. What the frick? There's a wild Tinkatuff? Wait, no, I don't want you to- oh my god, no, go! Battle! Oh, yo! The Tauros is two! Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, well, I think we've got one Bronzor, maybe two defeated. I feel like we might actually be able to take this Tinkatuff too. Just please battle Tinkatuff and not Tauros. Oh! Okay, there we go! No, 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 no! Do not battle the Tauros! And he battled the Tauros. Okay, well, this is fine. We can just heal up real quick. And I'll go take on this Bronzor. Please target it. Oh my gosh, dude, I swear the targeting doesn't even work half the time. But there we go, we got it. Even though it's not an auto battle like I wanted. Okay, finally, we take down the Bronzor. And I believe I saw Yi hit in level 26, which might just mean something special's happening. Yes, our little Fido is evolving. I brought it back onto the team. Honestly, I keep rotating my Pokemon all the time, and oh my gosh, this might actually be the cutest evolution ever. It's Dash Bun! Yo, this totally makes me want to go to Cinnabon. Is that what it's called? I want a Cinnamon Bun is the point. The pleasant aroma that emanates from this Pokemon helps wheat grow, so Dash Bun have been treasured by farming villages. Who wouldn't want to treasure this little doggy? It is definitely up there for cutest Pokemon of Paldea. Tinkatuff, or I guess it's pre-evolution for me, is also up there, but... I don't know, between those two, is kind of where I'm leaning. Let me know what you guys think, though. What is your favorite Pokemon in Paldea so far? Not just cutest, but in general, what's been your favorite Pokemon design-wise or just to use on your team that is new to the Paldea region? Doesn't look like there's any more Bronzors, and I don't want to deal with these Tauros anymore. Alright, we finally made it, and that reminds me, another comment told me that apparently we can press the B button and go up the ladder faster. I wouldn't have ever thought to try that though, so I don't know how people figured it out. I mean, I guess people just tried different things, but yo, this chest is a glowing. What could it mean? Oh. I guess we picked up the rare candy before even challenging the Gimme Ghoul, but I definitely want the Gimme Ghoul too. We need all the coins we can get, so, uh... Bro, <laughs> why is my trainer up there? Oh my god, that's actually kind of amazing. Is it a little bit dangerous? Yeah, but I like to live life on the edge. Literally. I'm curious if when this battle is over, we're actually going to be on top of this, like... Oh my god, we totally are! Yo, this is awesome! Hold up, this is definitely a selfie moment right here. Living life on the edge, oh yeah! Should we do it though? I mean, it seems like there's an item down there that we can't get unless we fall into it. Oh my god, no, I fell the wrong way! Dang it, okay, fine, I guess I'll use Goraidon the right way that you're supposed to, I guess. And it is a TM that we already had. I hear another Gimme Ghoul also. Aha! Don't mind if I do. But it doesn't look like there's any ruins around. So, uh, looks like we gotta find someplace else to kill Bronzors. And I did notice there are some ruins at the top of this cliff. I just don't know if we can actually reach it without having the climb ability. So, let's find out as we fly back to Artazan. Oh my god, is it on top of that? Giant plateau? Okay, yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to reach that until we've got the climb ability. Oh, hey Komala. I kind of feel like there might still be a way, like this doesn't look too high for us. Oh my god, okay, maybe it is, but not for the backwards jump. Oh, wait, maybe it still is. Okay, hold up. It's got a running start. Seriously? It totally looks like we can make that. Oh my gosh, we can totally make that. And not by glitching, but just like, if we angle it properly, huh? Come on, man, are you serious? Huh? 
Please! Oh, what? We made it! But was it worth it? No. Now can we make it up this cliff? Uh, dude, I'm pretty sure we can. It's just like getting the angle right. I ended up going back to an old area, which I remember had some ruins, and it looks like we could actually get a couple of other items now that we have the high jump ability. But yeah, there's definitely way more bronzies here. So, Char Cadet, go at him! Oh my god, look at how many! Yeah, we're definitely going to be able to get these bronze or fragments way easier. Unless I accidentally run into them again. Go, Char Cadet! Destroy! Alright, I think we should be good now. Char Cadet basically murdered every Bronzor around, so... Let's head back to Zappa Pico, which has a very interesting lighting effect going on. Oh man, that looked kind of cool. As long as it lasted, at least. But yes, I do have your Bronzor fragments now, so... Take them, and give me... That which I need! The Curio I promised you! Take good care of it! And we get a set of auspicious armor. Now this armor, and actually this whole quest, will be different in Pokemon Violet, where you'll find a different NPC that collects Sinistee, or rather the items that they drop. And if you've been paying attention, you should know exactly what Pokemon evolves with it. But just in case you haven't, allow me to show you, and you might notice that we can use this armor on Charcadet. That's right, it's time to jack in, because our Charcadet's going to be evolving into... Mega Man! Uh, I mean, Armor Rouge, of course! The Arm Cannon Blasting Fire and Psychic Warrior Pokemon. It has evolved through the use of a set of armor that belonged to a distinguished warrior, and this Pokemon is incredibly loyal. And it looks absolutely amazing. Like, this has to be one of the best... Well, I guess everyone will have their own opinion on this Pokemon, but I feel like, along with its evolution, they're going to be some of the most popular Pokemon this generation. Like, I've seen so many people posting screenshots of their teams, and Armoru slash Cerulege are almost always on it. And at least Armor Rouge, upon evolving, will be learning Psy Shock, which I will definitely grab. However, you might notice that uh, Armor Rouge is a special attacker, and mine has literally one of the worst natures possible boosting attack and lowering its special attack when you definitely want something that raises your special attack instead or at least doesn't lower it. I suppose I could use a mint on it but let's see I have a careful mint which lowers special attack, sassy mint lowers speed definitely don't want that either and hasty mint raises speed but lowers defense. I mean I guess out of the options we have this is probably the best so now armor just stats have changed thanks to the effects of the mint. So we're gonna go check out the stats and compare them to earlier where we had I think 72 special attack. Now we've got 81, so almost 10 more. Plus our speed is gonna be way higher. So it's still not the best nature you could have, but definitely way better. Now it's worth noting that you can actually trade this guy again and he'll give you another armor, I believe, if you give him 10 more bronze or fragments. So if you have a friend with Pokemon Violet that's in need of an Armor Rouge, you can get an extra armor from this guy and then trade it to them. Still not quite sure what this battlefield here in the middle is supposed to be for. Whoa, there's a Rocky Helmet just chilling right there? Okay, <laughs> that's actually one of the better held items, at least back in the day. I mean, it's still good, but with how many crazy new held items they introduced, Rocky Helmet seems kind of tame in comparison now, but... For now, we're going to be moving on to the Team Star Poison base. Now that we've got our Armor Rouge, that should be very good against Poison type, which are of course weak to Psychic. And the boss here is going to be Atticus of the Navi Squad. Atticus is of middling strength among the Team Star bosses, a descendant of ninjas, or so he believes. He likes to dress the part and use fancy speech and poison skills to toy with foes. Taking the whole edgelord thing a little too serious, so we're going to set that as our destination and head off to fight Atticus, who I do remember from one of the uh, cutscenes or like flashback scenes with Mela. Might have had the weirdest outfit, and that's even despite Mela's gigantic boots. He seemed quite edgy and yo, what the frick? What are you doing here? Oh my gosh. Wait, you're so much bigger than I thought you would be. <laughs> We got Setatl, the pre-evolution of Setitan, and oh my goodness, I know I keep saying this, but truly, 
this might be the cutest Pokemon in the game. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Between this, Tinkatink, -tink, and Dashbun, who we evolved earlier, I honestly can't pick. They're all so freaking cute. And this one, of course, being an ice type. Hopefully we can catch it here, because I don't really have the strongest of Pokeballs, but Luxury Ball is always the most comfortable, as we've caught Citadel. I wonder if that means that we're getting close to the Ice Mountain then. I mean, yeah, I think this is the base of the mountain. But this species left the ocean and began living on land a very long time ago. It seems to be very closely related to Whalemur. Oh, that makes so much sense, because it's literally just as round and just as cute. And I can't even come up with a cuter nickname for you than the default Citadel. That's already too amazing. But what the frick? This is a wild kiddo? Yo! I didn't know we were going to be seeing those in the wild already, but yeah, that is a freaking Flareon. Why is there a wild Flareon out here? And a Axu? No! You stupid cricket! I was trying to fight that Flareon and now it's gone. Okay, well, clearly we're not supposed to be in this area yet, considering it's level 36, and I can't run away! Are you kidding me? Level 36, I doubt we'll be able to catch it, but I believe I do have a Quick Ball, so we might as well at least try and see if maybe it works out. I mean, we did catch that Dino earlier, which was just as high level, so you never know! Quick Ball, go! And what the heck is that behind us? Oh my god, there's so many weird Pokemon here. Okay, at least we caught it. But now I'm more curious about the freaking ostrich back there. Axu, you're also cute. But uh, yeah, we've got more important things to do. So go ahead, get registered on in there. And now we can go see what is up with this thing. Oh my goodness. Level 36. Uh, Maybe if I switch things up. Whoa, 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 okay. No time to waste. It's jumping right on up to us. And this is actually going to be Espathra, the psychic ostrich Pokemon, who's actually a pure psychic type. Well, I just said it's psychic. But I guess you might assume it is psychic and flying or psychic and ground. I don't know. But the point is, it's just a pure psychic type and uh, does a lot of damage. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to catch this thing. Okay, there's still a chance. If Yi can get a lick and paralyze it, then maybe, just maybe, we can still catch it. But then again, I'm pretty sure because we only have three badges, we're not even going to be able to actually use this Pokemon effectively. Oh my gosh, how lucky can we get? Let's go. Got the paralysis. Now, I'm still going to go for one more bite just so we can get a little bit more damage. Maybe bring it into the red zone. And I believe this Pokemon can only be female. I could be wrong, but at least I've only seen female Flittle, which I didn't mention, but yeah, this is the evolution of Flittle, and we actually caught it in maybe the coolest looking Pokeball for it. Sick. Everybody gets some experience. Well, the ones that didn't die at least. And we've got Espathra the Ostrich. It immobilizes opponents by bathing them in psychic power from its large eyes, and despite its appearance, it has a vicious temperament. My goodness. Well, I do actually have a pretty good nickname for you. At least I think that's how you spell it, but I don't even know how to pronounce it. Sia? Saya? When I show the picture, you'll probably realize why I called it that. And into the decks you go! Confirmed as the evolution of Flittle. But wait! There's more because little Mary's gonna be evolving! Oh my goodness! How many evolutions do we got today? Okay! It's time for Dolive! Yes, our little Olive Pokemon has finally evolved, but there's still more to come, because this is only the second stage of three, which you can actually see there in the decks. Well, I guess there's two more spaces to fill, but one of them would have had to be Bonsly, since it was next to Sudowoodo. But yeah, we got yet another evolution of a Pokemon that I'm not really even using in the playthrough. <laughs> Now we actually have to decide which of these Pokemon we want to bring with us into the Poison Team Star Base. Definitely not Dashbun. Fairy type would get wrecked. So would Mary. So maybe we do bring this brand new Espatra onto the squad. Again, we're going to have all female Pokemon, but that's fine. Like I said, I'm not actually sure if we're even going to be able to use it because it's such a high level, but might as well bring it and just find out. 
Because uh, if we can use it, then that's probably going to be like the most OP thing we can have against the Team Star base. Which just so happens to be right here. But I'm pretty sure if we jump in, they're going to get mad and want us to go to the front gate. Oh my goodness. Got a low kicks jump scare. Hold on though, I'm actually curious. If we try to auto battle this thing, because we're super effective, maybe we could actually beat it. Oh my god, let's go! Even though it's like 10 levels above us, uh, we can actually destroy it using auto battle. And you might have noticed there, um, when Armor Rouge leveled up, there was a little light bulb symbol. That actually means that your Pokemon learned a new move, but because it got it through an auto battle, it doesn't automatically ask you if you want to teach it. So let's actually go into the summary, and I haven't shown this off yet, but you can actually change your moves whenever you want. And remember all of the moves that your Pokemon has tried to learn that you didn't teach it. So you can see we've actually got Mystical Fire in here, as well as Incinerate, but Mystical Fire actually does a little bit more damage. So yeah, I will definitely grab that instead of the Flame Charge. Since Armor Rouge is more of a special attacker, Mystical Fire will definitely be better. I'm gonna assume this is the front gates of the Team Star base, but they don't have a little bell to ring like they usually do. So I wonder, well, do you have a cutscene at least? <gasps> Yo, this is the Grafii Forest! I just noticed! Orange! What's up, Clive? I mean, no, not Clavel. Obviously, this is not Clavel. Now, let's pick up our conversation where we left off. Hyo! As I mentioned, I joined Operation Starfall to resolve a sticky situation and find out the reasons behind Team Star's odd behavior. Above all, I want to know why the students have stopped coming to school. Because they're too cool for school, duh. Took one look at you and realized they could never compete with such fashion, such class. That's why I want to speak with these students. Okay, obviously he's not saying anything too crazy, but uh, till then... Yeah, like his dialogue wasn't the most riveting. <laughs> Basically just reminding us that we gotta take down, or that he's gonna help us maybe to take down the Team Star base, which just so happens to be right here. Do me a favor and go home already, will ya? Oh my god, does little Timmy wanna join Team Star? <laughs> no, I wanna see the boss. Like I said, kid, the boss told me to not let any outsiders pass these gates. And that includes you. I don't care. I'm not leaving till you let me talk to Don Atticus! Give me a break, you little doofus! The people over there seem to be arguing, oh really? Go say hello, or get a little closer. I mean, yeah, let's go say hi. Huh? What's the problem? Oh great, here comes another rando to ruin my day. I didn't think this grunt work for Team Star newbies would be this much of a chore. Ugh. Hold on, Mr. Grunt. I think this boy might be orange. Oh my god, he knows us? Wait, that kid who picked a fight with Team Star? Yup, that's me. I knew it. Oh boy, this ain't good. Everyone else in the base is still asleep since we were up all night playing video games. Leave him to me, Mr. Grunt. I'll buy some time for you to go wake the others up. Yeah, and what's in it for you? Don Atticus will be in danger if no one's here to defend the base. I owe that man my life! He's my dear compadre! And when Crisis calls, one has no choice but to rally to those dear to him, no matter the cost! Oh my god, seriously, what is up with this kid? He's like a little bit too smart for his own good. Alright, you villain! If you're after Don Atticus, be prepared to face my wrath! Wait a minute. I don't beat up on little kids, that's just mean. Wise choice. Oh. No, 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 I mean... I do want to battle you, actually, but I suppose we can check out some of the Pokemon around here. I'm just going to pretend I didn't even see that one. But I also kept hearing a Gimme Ghoul, and never mind. I guess we stepped too close, so fine. Let's beat up this kid. Yeah! Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's going Super Saiyan on us. Relax. We got Pokemon Trainer Yusuf. Sorry I called you Timmy earlier. Obviously, this guy is much more of a threat than Timmy would ever be. Look at him! He's serious business! But unfortunately for him, I just got myself an Arma Rouge! And with the Psy Shock, it is gonna absolutely destroy this dude! Or at least his Gulpin, which isn't really the strongest Pokemon, but... You might have noticed it was actually at level 30, 
So we might be a little bit underleveled actually for this Team Star base still. Or at least at around its same level because we do have Whoop Sire. No, not Whoop Sire. Claude Sire. Whoop Sire is a totally different entity. <laughs> What I was trying to say is Whoopi's at level 30, so we're going to be about equal level with Atticus. I talk big, but I'm no warrior. No, that would be Armor Rouge. Don Atticus, I'm sorry I failed you. It's okay, little dude. We all fail every once in a while. That's what life's all about. Gotta learn from your mistakes and grow bigger, harder, stronger. You're right. I'm not a member of Team Star, but Don Atticus is still my compadre. I have to see him no matter what! What does that even mean? Like, his godfather? I think compadre just means like, a friend. But I feel like in this context that the kid is saying, maybe it's more like a senpai? Nice work dealing with the guard. Oh hey, thanks for invading my privacy again. Within that base lies Team Star's poison crew, the Navi Squad. Their boss Atticus designs the outfits for the team. You could say he has clever hands. The guy's also a bit of an eccentric, <laughs> aka he's freaking weird. You can never tell what he's going to do next. So since it's beyond us to predict how he'll respond, just take out as many of the squad's Pokemon as you can until he shows his face. Ring the bell on the gates once you're ready to kick off this phase. Time to wipe the Navi squad off the map! Heck yeah. I think Armor Rouge can still handle it, even if we are a little bit low on levels. There's finally that Gimme Ghoul, and now it is time to challenge Team Star yet again! Well, actually, let me make sure that, uh, yeah, I didn't even have Whoopi, like, up there. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Notch, just in case Espatra or Sia is too high of level. That would suck if we can't even use her. And we'll give Armor Rouge the wise glasses. Now we're ready to take on our third Team Star base, the Navi Squad. There's that badass theme kicking in. Seems the folks behind Operation Star Fool are finally making a move against our base. You know what that means, gang. Time for us to shine bright and avenge our teammates. And hey, little intruder, just so you know, if you've got the skills to beat 30 of our Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, we know. The frick? Did someone just fart? What was that? Oh my god, is that Armor Rouge just cried? What was that? Like, obviously it is Armor Rouge's Cry, but why? Oh my gosh, it's Venonats! And a Venomoth? Oh, that's not... Wait, actually, I don't know why for a second I thought that maybe uh, Armor Rouge was like fighting type. Kind of looks like a fighting type, to be honest, like design-wise, but no, it's definitely uh, Fire and Psychic. So, should be able to destroy all of these little fools. Oh, wait, not Notch, though. Uh, that was a Moongus, which is grass type, so, uh, yeah. Gonna get a little bit beat up. Yo, there's finally Grafii. Oh my gosh, it's actually so much bigger than the little Shroodles. Well, I suppose that's more on the Shroodles being tiny than, like, Grafii actually being big. Then again, compared to this Amoongus, like, what the frick? Has Amoongus always been that tiny? I could have sworn Amoongus was bigger than that before. I don't really know, but uh, where do we have more Pokemon? This Team Star base is a little bit of a maze. Or not a maze, but the layout's a little confusing because it's like a forest. I'm getting turned around very quickly, but I don't think we've been up this way. Yeah, we have some more Boonguses to beat up my arch nemesis. Get rid of them. Whoopi, where the frick are you going? Oh no, poor Notch is dead. Maybe we should go find one of those vending machines. If there even is one around here. Bro, there's a Star Crystal or Terra Raid? What the heck? What is happening? I hear a Pokemon, like, going in and out of its Pokeball continuously. But yeah, here's the vending machine. Let's refresh our party. It doesn't even cost anything? Are you kidding me? How the heck is the Star Base supposed to be... Oh, okay, well, we actually can't go out to that crystal anyway, because there's a fence. But uh, here's some more Gulpin. Take him away! No! Kill him! Please, Whoopi, what are you doing, man? <laughs> I don't know why Whoopi's just like off doing his own thing. Maybe we actually did get too high level. Or like the cutoff was 30. But no, I'm pretty sure I remember Iono said that we can train Pokemon 
up to level 35, or at least Pokemon that we've caught ourselves. I think it works a little bit different, like from Pokemon that you catch in the wild versus ones that you level up yourself. Okay, I had to walk all the way across the base, but finally we find, we found the last three Pokemon to knock out. Whoopi, come on! Thank you! Finally, we've done it! With a whole seven minutes still to spare. He's way above our level! No, I'm not. I'm literally at level 30, which is exactly what I think Atticus should be. That might just be the coolest looking Starmobile yet. I love the kind of pixelated design it's got. But here is our third boss, Atticus, who said he was inspired by ninjas, but it's kind of looking like he came straight out of Splatoon. And so is this music, now that I'm hearing more of it. Pray forgive my sudden entry. Tis I, Atticus! You're that scoundrel orange, I take it. You have some nerve bearing your fangs at Team Sar. Come then, villainous wretch, a plunge into grim poison shall be your well-deserved fate. On guard! I know he's not British, but like, with all that proper speak he be doing, I feel it was only appropriate. Whoa, 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 man just did a backflip on us, and the nail polish? Okay, Atticus, I see you, dude. Styling on him. Not but punishment awaits thee, wretch. A plague on your house! Oh my god. That's a serious threat, man. So he's gonna kick things off with a Skun Tank, which is not great since it's Dark and Poison type. So Armor Rouge is actually not gonna work at all against it. So already we're having a bit of a rough time here. I should have probably just let off with Whoopi, but better late than never, I suppose. There we go. I love how the sky is like getting purple right now, too. It's totally fitting with like the sky Stoil which is apparently based on a ninja? But if the point of a ninja is to be discreet, why would you wear such bright colors? Certain moves can poison with a mere graze. Tremble, scoundrel, for thy Pokemon's sake! Can't poison, Whoopi! What are you talking about? Are you actually gonna try to use a poison attack on me? Cause like, if you were thinking about it, then uh, I would reconsider, scoundrel. You absolute- Oh my god, okay. I'm gonna stop talking smack, cause uh, that Sucker Punch actually did kind of hurt. But one more Stomping Tantrum takes out his first Pokemon, which means it is time for the Starmobile, baby! Or at least I think. Maybe he actually has more than one Pokemon. Oh no, it's Repo Room, okay. We're gonna stay in because, you know, we'll be still probably the best to... What the heck? Wait, excuse me? Why is there a car floating on top of another car? That's a little strange. Okay, he's actually faster, but Whoopi survives with one health. Oh wait, what? Yo, the friendship is actually a thing in this game? I didn't even know. Okay, let's go Whoopi. I'm just gonna pretend that you had like sturdy or something cause that was a little too close for comfort. Uh, we should definitely switch out and considering it just went bulldoze, I'm guessing it's gonna go for it again. So we'll switch out to Luma who's flying type and can tank it, of course. But, Revabroom, I'm assuming because it's like on top of the car, it's the actual engine Pokemon, which means that it is a steel and poison type. So, ground moves are gonna be four times super effective, and I'm very surprised that we didn't one-shot it with our stomping tantrum earlier, but at least Luma's able to finish it off with an Electro Ball. And next up, we've got Mark. Don't try to spell its name backwards, you will definitely regret it. I don't know why I always feel the need to remind people that that's a thing, it's just that disgusting! <laughs> but speaking of disgusting, we are doing very low amounts of damage. I'm not exactly sure what's disgusting about that. Usually when people say that something is doing disgusting damage, they mean like a lot, not a little. I mean, I suppose you could say that Sludge Wave is kind of disgusting totally just destroyed Luma. It's finally time to bring out the Pokemon we trained up just for this situation, Armor Rouge. Hit him with the Psy Shock! And this actually does damage based on physical defense, I believe, instead of special, even though it is a special move. I was gonna say that I'm not sure whether Muk has a higher special or physical, but you think to give me a taste of mine own poison? Bye. 
I will fight on! That's right, we gotta fight the big boy car now, which is a little different to the Reva Vroom we fought earlier. Oh my god, here it comes, the Noxious Torque, which I'm guessing has a chance to poison, but thankfully it didn't actually end up poisoning us, and the Psy Shock does a good amount actually, okay. Oh, I should have went for Will-O-Wisp actually, because then, well, I don't know if the Torque move is a physical or special. All I know is that it's the type that the Starmobile is, which in this one's case is definitely Poison. So why don't we go back into Whoopi? I mean, he's probably going to die even if it's not very effective. But at this point, I feel like the best move is to just heal up our Marouge so that we can continue to go Psy Shock. As he actually goes for Spin Out, what the heck? That's new. Okay, lower speed too? Huh. I wonder if Revavroom's moves, or like I guess the Starmobile specifically, has exclusive moves that you can't get on just regular Revavroom. Or if like Revavroom itself, like the regular Pokemon, also learns those moves. Not really sure, but Spin Out seems like it was a ground type attack, so yeah, that's gonna be super effective! Okay, I mean. We do have the Rocky Helmet, so you're going to take a little bit of extra damage. And with the Bulldoze, I think also lowers its speed. Nice. I think we might actually be faster now, but... Oh no, the Toxic Debris! So I guess each Starmobile also has a different ability? And apparently this one spreads Toxic Spikes. Wait, what the frick? You're still faster? Are you serious, dude? That's not good. Well, at least we got another Rocky Helmet proc, so I'm pretty sure Armaru should be able to finish it with one more Psy Shock. And I mean, we're definitely going to be faster, right? <gasps> oh no, the Toxic Spikes! Oh, that's not good. Please tell me we don't actually take poison damage on this first turn, right? Okay, thank goodness. Do we have Psychic? Oh no, we have uh, Fire-type Terrasilize. Okay, well... In that case, it's not worth it. I'm sorry, commenters. I know you guys are always complaining that I don't terrestrialize, but we don't need it in this case. We finish it with the Psy Shock, and we take down yet another member of Team Star. Atticus has been given a taste of his own medicine. Bitter defeat. Forgive me, my friends. And it's time for a flashback. About a year and a half ago... Yo! What?! I did not think he looked like... What? Okay! Forgive me, it took a goodly time to procure the required materials. Whoa! Sick! These boots are insane! Oh, so Atticus made Mela's boots? The move Flame Charge was my muse for those particular pieces. This outfit is everything I imagined it would be! Thank you so much! Ah, so he's the designer of Team Star. I merely wish to create a costume worthy of the great Infernal Eri. If it aligns with your vision, then I am content. Seems our outfit upgrades are all wrapped up then. Thanks a ton, Atticus. With you two looking like absolute beasts, anyone who crosses us will be sweating bullets. You're so good at these sort of crafty things, Atticus. Those people bullying you because you geek out over old-fashioned stuff are out of their minds. Who are you? The way of the ninja is rough and fraught with thorns. I neither expect nor desire sympathy from the unrefined rabble. Ooh, someone's getting fired up. Watch out, world. Atticus has fighting words. Yeah, don't listen to the haters, Atticus. I think you're really cool. All right, gang. Let's move on to the next step. It's time to put our backs into our battle training so we're all prepped for Operation Star. We gotta be stronger than everyone else in the team. That's what being a boss means. Indeed it does. Henceforth, I will devote myself, heart and soul, to honing my battle skills. Damn. You should probably remove that cloak more often, man. That beautiful face needs to be shown to the world. <laughs> For the sake of the team, I would give my very heart and soul, but I cannot defy the rules. Our code must be obeyed. And so, this badge is mine to keep no more. I entrust it to thy care. I wonder if in the picture, though, is he going to remove the cloak? I guess not. Bow down to Atticus. Take this contraption, too. It contains a technique that allows one to cover their foes in gunk. Is it literally? Yep. Gunk shot. The user shoots filthy garbage. Orange is thy name, is it not? 
you have utterly bested me, but thy victory stirred no bitterness within me. Such was its brilliance! Oh hey! Don Atticus! M my compadre? <laughs> it seems this little fella has been dying to speak with you face to face. Don Atticus, please, hear what I have to say! Whatever brought you all the way here? I came to help you! If you don't start going to class again, you'll be exp- Oh my god, he was an inside agent? No way! When the other kids at school and I were getting bullied real bad, you and the rest of Team Star saved us! Thanks to that operation you carried out, we were all able to go to school again! If you got expelled for being the good guys, that'd be the worst thing ever! Forgive me. Haven't you heard anything from the big boss? Oh wait, that's the kid talking? Nay, we've heard not a whisper since that fateful day. Dang. Without the big boss, Team Star cannot carry on. And without the team, the bright and merry student life we seek lies beyond our reach. We've no choice but to defend our bases till the big boss returns. You evidently trust this big boss of yours a great deal, huh? Who exactly are they? In truth, not one of us has met them in the flesh. But their own word, they're a recluse, as with the rest of us. Twould seem bullying was to blame. That's awful. Though their name and face be unknown, they are nonetheless our precious comrade. Our only choice is to maintain our vigils from the bases, awaiting the day of their return. So that's why you don't go to school. But still, don't ever think that Team Star is all you have, Don Atticus. You've got a lifelong compadre in me, and don't you forget it! My compadre, I owe you a great debt. It seems we're one step closer to the truth behind Team Star's truancy and the bullying at the academy. But more importantly, I can't believe I had no idea about these issues. They have friendships they hold dear and reasons for acting as they do. I just couldn't see it. It's shameful how oblivious I've been. Ha, <laughs> I believed Team Star to be the one and only treasure in my life. Methinks I may have been mistaken. The more we learn about Team Star, the more I'm starting to understand them. And it seems that so is Clive, so maybe, just maybe he'll change his mind about him. I mean, it would sure be nice if we could wear other outfits, like they do. Orange, it's me. Okay, we know. Atticus's badge, yes, we got it. I see. Now that its boss has been taken down, the Navi Squad's days are numbered. Just please tell me your penny already, like... All signs seem to be pointing towards it, but I feel like the fact they're not just confirming it means it's probably not Penny. So Operation Starfall seems like a good time to let you know what we're ultimately aiming to achieve. <gasps> Finally, our goal is to defeat the mastermind that first recruited the five squad bosses and created Team Star, the one they call the Big Boss. Aren't you the Big Boss though? I'm pretty sure that's what they were implying in the flashbacks. Who knows? They control the five squad bosses from the shadows. That's all anyone can say. If we defeat this person and get them to declare the team disbanded, that'll be it for Team Star. Since the big boss never set up their own base and keeps hidden away, I take it they're not one for the spotlight. But once all the squad bosses are out of action, the big boss will finally have to take that stage. Now, about your reward, I'll transfer some LP as promised. Hey, love me some... Cryptocurrency, yeah, yeah, 7k2, wow, amazing. Have your Pokemon learn strong moves so that they can continue to be of use to the operation. My supply unit should, rep should be with you soon. You mean you? I honestly can't tell anymore, dude. They talk about how the Team Star boss is kind of shy, likes to hide, which I feel like fits Penny, but then they also mentioned before that the Team Star boss is Cassiopeia? I don't know. I'm all sorts of confused, but it seems at least Koraidon's not confused about liking Penny, so maybe she is a good guy, after all. So, that mastermind you were talking about, Cassiopeia's mentioned them to me too. Team Star's founder, the person who's caused all kinds of misery at the Academy? If we don't take them down, I'll lose what I treasure most in the world! Treasure? Now you mention the treasure too? Ah, no, I just... Uh, that's right, you need your reward! Here, take it before I forget! Way to divert the subject. 
All right, well, I'll be off then. <laughs> oh? Orange? Don't lose to those guys. Oh my god. Was that a threat? Penny. Calm down, homie. Okay. Yo, is that a little shrewdle? Because I somehow have not caught a shrewdle yet. And oh my god, that Venonat looks kind of terrifying in the background with his big glowing eyes. But yeah, somehow I haven't actually caught a shrewdle yet. So let's give this a try. I mean, we're not really at the highest of HP. So, uh, this better catch. I don't know why I went for a netball, actually. Because there's probably no chance that... Okay. I suppose I should have expected it. And now, we are totally dead. After all that hard work, Armor Rouge is dead. Whatever, dude. I don't got time for this. We will try again in the next episode. And also to catch all the other Pokemon that might be lurking around. Because I'm sure there are plenty of Grafii hiding in these trees. Oh, speaking of, there's actually a Pinecone hiding up there. Okay. Well... I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed, as next time we'll be taking on the Water Gym, so I'll catch you guys then.